the stock boy and the checkout girl. Now it doesn't mean to check out the girls. It means this girl was the checkout person at the cash register. So the reason we want to talk about this story is it talks about determination and faith. And a lot of times you can have faith, but if you don't have the determination to do what you know is necessary, you'll never get the blessings that God and Jesus has for you. So it didn't seem that it's funny that this guy's name's Curtis. It didn't seem that Curtis would amount to much. Even though he was raised in church, believed in Jesus, his faith in God was not that good, especially when his parents divorced when he was young and he struggled to make ends meet. He was going to college working in a supermarket. Curtis, the stock boy, was busily working when a new voice came over the loudspeaker, asking for a carry out at the register. Curtis was almost finished and wanted to get some fresh air and decided to answer the call. <coughs> As he approached the checkout stand, a distant smile caught his eye. The new checkout girl was beautiful. She was an older woman, maybe 26, and he was only 22. And he fell in love. Later that day, after his shift was over, he waited by the punch clock to find out her name. She came into the break room, smiled softly at him, took her card and punched out, then left. He looked at her card. Yeah, her name was Brenda. He walked out only to see her start walking up the road. Next day, he waited outside as she left the supermarket and offered her a ride. Oh, uh, he looked harmless enough, Brenda thought, so she went ahead and she accepted. When he dropped her off, he asked if maybe he could see her again outside of work. She simply said it wasn't possible. He pressed and she explained she had two children and she couldn't afford a babysitter. So he offered to pay for the babysitter. Reluctantly, she accepted his offer for a date for the following Saturday. That Saturday night, he arrived at her door only to have her tell him that she was unable to go with him. The babysitter had called and had canceled. To which Curtis simply said, well, let's take the kids. She tried to explain that taking the children was not an option. But again, not taking no for an answer, he pressed. Finally, Brenda brought him inside to meet her children. She had an older daughter who was just as cute as a bug. Curtis thought, then Brenda brought out her son in a wheelchair. He was born paraplegic with Down syndrome. Curtis asked Brenda, I still don't understand why the kids can't come with us. What's the problem? <coughs> it's because you, your, your child needs a, has a disability? You're going to find out I'm different. And besides that, I got determination. I'm in love with you. <laughs> Brenda was amazed. Most boys who think they are men would run away from a woman with two kids, especially if one had disabilities, just like her first husband and father of her children had done. Curtis was not ordinary. He had a different mindset and true love for Brenda. That evening, Curtis and Brenda loaded up the kids, went to dinner and the movies. 
When her son needed anything, Curtis would take care of him. When he needed to use the restroom, he picked him up out of his wheelchair, took him and brought him back. The kids loved Curtis. At the end of the evening, Brenda knew this was the man she was going to marry and spend the rest of her life with. A year later, they were married and Curtis adopted both of her children. Since then, they have had two more kids. Curtis talked about Brenda and his wife when they met, how she was always talking about Jesus. She challenged me early and often in our relationship about what I believed and why I believed it. I think before that I always felt faith was kind of, well, God was out there and whenever I needed him, he was like my spare tire, that when I get a flat, I go and pop the trunk and pull out the spare. And God, you know I need this. When he read the Bible closely and in context, he said he realized he had his view of God backwards. I had this mixed up. God's not just here for me. The goal is that I'm here for him. I'm here to give my life for him as Jesus did for me, Curtis said. And it started to become real. I started to understand and take a different perspective on what life was all about. And it took some crazy moments to really understand that. One moment that impacted him, he said, was the tragic death of Brenda's parents in a tornado. I remember how she didn't have all the answers and she was angry, and she was willing to call out to God and ask God why and yell and scream, but never lose her faith. It was never one of those things where, oh God, you allowed this to happen to us, so now I'm going to walk away from you. Brenda had a great relationship with Jesus and never lost her faith. This was the type of relationship I wanted with God. Being able to disagree a moment, to be angry a moment, but not allow that to stop the relationship. And to me, that was when I kind of stepped back and thought, everything she had been talking to me about, this is what it looks like. This is what it's supposed to be. And it was in those moments where I came to realize, okay, I never had that. And that's exactly what I want. And it was at that time where I really committed my life to Jesus. <laughs> While we were married with no resources to purchase a home of their own, we lived in the basement of Brenda's parents' home. To support his family, Kurt worked long hours as a night stock clerk at the local Hy-Vee grocery store. At times, the family relied on food stamps to feed their family. In sport two, Curtis seemed unlikely to break free and get into the pros. But Curtis, he loved football and had played at both high school and college. He hoped to compete in the NFL, but he was overlooked by professional teams. He went on a sign for four years. When he finally was picked up by the Green Bay Packers, he was released before ever playing in a game. That must have been a heartbreak. But what Kirk lacked in financial resource and athletic acclaim, he made up in determination <clears throat> and faith. In 1998, he finally landed a spot on the St. Louis Rams starting lineup and led the team to their first Super Bowl title in Super Bowl 34. That year and again in 2001, Curtis was named the team's most valuable player. In all, he played three Super Bowls and in 2017, he was inducted to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. 
Well, Mr. and Mrs. Kirk Warner now live in Arizona, where he was employed as a quarterback of the National Football League, Arizona Cardinals, until 2009, and had taken his Cardinals to the Super Bowl. Is this a surprise ending? Could you have guessed that he was not an ordinary person? We have faith in Jesus, and we are not ordinary people. We have determination never, never to fail. Life made Kurt Warner an underdog. Faith made him a champion. As Christians, we should always be the example of our community for our neighbors so that when they're down, when things are hard for them, they can see us as believers and say like Kurt, I want what you have. Do you still have faith? For with God, nothing shall be impossible.